All right, we're going to make a simple yeast starter here. And we've talked about it a few times in the past. And uh, we're actually going to show you how to do it. This is uh, basically just common tap water. Uh, Steve's got this really nice beaker here. Yep. Uh, but you can do this, you know, with a What I want to do is about pan. a three pint starter right now. So I'm going to start with about 1,500 milliliters of water. Nice using the beaker because you can put the water right on it. It'll sanitize. The vessel's been cleaned. It'll sanitize it while it's boiling. I mean, you could do this in a saucepan. Could be done in a saucepan. We brought this water to a boil. I'm going to shut the fire off. And now I'm going to do my best. I don't. This is something new I'm doing using this container, but i got to get this this malt in there. So, as you can see... That I would be a boil over. I should have waited. <laughs> I should have waited. Mm -hmm. Even even professionals yeah. make mis make mistakes. Right? Should have let that go on a little longer. You gotta want to try to avoid that. But uh, I should have let that cool a little bit. And I probably should have maybe dissolved this into a pot first, and then I could have poured it into here. It may have been easier to do. Yeah. Well, no. You know, we've, you know how we've talked about how sticky DME is. I think I'm going to switch over, and we're going to put this into a, the pot I have. Yeah. So we've been able to avoid the boiler, which. Just, just so you know, we uh, we did a little clean up here, uh, switched over to a bigger pot, um, getting the wort out of our Erlenmeyer flask, and we've just brought this wort to a, a boil now. I'm going to adjust the heat. I want to get a fairly hard boil going without, without it uh, foaming up and overflowing too much, so we'll keep an eye on that. Well, we're going to boil this for about uh, five minutes and let it cool. Okay, we boiled our wort for about five minutes now. We can see the foam has settled down. It doesn't want to act up, the, uh, we, so we've broken down some of the things that's causing it, the foam. And now we're just going to turn this off. I'm going to put a lid on it. The lid's been cleaned, um, preferably sanitized. And we're going to chill this now. I'm going to, because it's six degrees outside? Yes. <laughs> I think it's six degrees outside. We're going to set this on the concrete outside the store. Um, just set it on the sidewalk for several minutes, maybe half an hour, and hopefully it'll take care of itself here. Nice thing, to, nice thing about things being that cold outside, there's not too many bugs flying around either that's going to hurt you. Uh, in the meantime, we're uh, going to go back and re-sanitize our uh, Erlenmeyer flask. I'm just going to boil water in it uh, once the water comes to a boil. I'll shut that off. I'll put the uh, rubber stopper in there so that that can get sanitized by the steam. And uh, that'll be ready for us when it's time to put the wort into it. Uh, in the meantime, I pulled out, I'm actually getting this yeast ready for um, uh, Friday's brewing. I've got an American Lager yeast, uh, WLP 840. It's been about 20 to 25 minutes. I just stepped outside. Um, I'm not going to stick a thermometer in it. I'm just going to do it by hand touch. I uh, figure if it's less than 90 degrees, it can be pitched. That might not be the most professional manner, <laughs> but it's going to work for us. Well, I'm impressed. And this might be just a little warm yet, so I'm going to hold, hold over there a star sand. I've got a mixture of star sand I put in here. Um, spray bottle. It does a really nice job, mostly on contact, sanitizing items. Spray that down. Sprayed my thumbs and hands while I was doing it. And I'm just going to set that over there. And again, that's a no-rinse sanitizer. Yes. And of course, we've talked about star sand quite a bit. And I put star sand in these inside the airlock earlier. And just going to set that here. <coughs> Let that cool a little bit more. I don't want to put my yeast in there if it's too hot because it will uh, kill the yeast. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to let this sit for a minute. So what are we oh, doing I'm here, doing Steve? Right now, I, I'm getting ready to put the American Lager yeast. I cracked the seal on it, let the gases out. I am shaking it up because you can see that there's some yeast hanging on the bottom. I'm trying to get that all loosened up into the mix. Now I have to be careful opening yeah. this up again because I've stirred this up. I've got oxygen in there. It's wanting to work. Yeah, we, we so did I'm that. We slowly we, outcasting it. <laughs> we uh, opened ours right up and it exploded like all over. I had on the stove that I had to clean up earlier. 
Okay, um, you want to hand me the star sand over there? Okay, wonderful things about star sand. You didn't get it on the camera. Good job. I got it on the hat. That's fine. As long as you didn't get it on the camera, we're good. Star sand, <laughs> a few things there. And in our yeast goes. This was clean before I put it away anyways. I will sanitize. That's a little pill for the stir plate. That's the word I'm looking for. Star sand works relatively quickly. Goes in here. Find the pill. Drag it to the center of the... Yeah. And slowly turn on the stir plate. Or spray that plug with it. There we go. Right, so over here you can see the little vortex in there. And there you have it. You go. We've got a starter going. All right. Now do you need to use a stir plate? Uh, stir plate's not necessary, but they do recommend uh, oxygenating the wort. The stir plate works very, very well at doing that. You don't have to um, shake or anything like that. It just does a steady kind of steady motion and draws oxygen into the wort while it's working. 